Hello there, Jason Berggren here. I hope this day finds you well. I've been driving around trying to find the perfect little place to shoot this first video and I really don't like anything, so I figured I'd just start talking. You know, people are always asking me why I would use the word hate in the title of my book. In interview after interview, I get emails all the time and it's a fair question. So what I wanted to do was take a moment to explain this idea of when it's good to hate. That's right when it's good to hate. I'm a big guy. It's true. I like food. It's like the famous poets, the rap band, the fat boys from the 1980s once said, I'm hungry, I'm in the mood, plain and simple, I need food. And I feel like that a lot. Now every New Year's it's the same thing. I wake up, look at myself in the mirror and say, Jason, I hate the way you look. And I start making resolutions. But you know how it is. In a few weeks, those resolutions start fading away because I love food more than I hate the way that I look. My battle with Coke, cheeseburgers, chocolate shakes is one thing, but tension like this isn't always so funny. And the things that we hold most dear to us, the things that are most important to us, there seems to be this thin line between love and hate. And so many times we find ourselves there and we don't know what to do. And too many times we just let things fester and boil and turn us bitter, cold, and closed. And what we have to do is learn how to turn this negative tension into positive momentum. Well, let's get going. In the things that are most important to us in life, if we don't do that, we'll never have any peace, any clarity, or any contentment. And that's the place I found myself time and time again with regard to my faith, the most important thing to me. In areas like prayer, the Bible, hell, church, with other Christians, or even faith itself, this idea of living in the unknown. I've had to figure out how to work through these things so that my faith doesn't die and wither away, so that I don't become closed and angry and bitter as a person. In short, that's when it can be good to hate. When we can use this deep sense of angst-ridden frustration as an indicator that we need to change, to grow, to move forward. Because the question isn't whether or not it's going to happen. The question is, what are you going to do about it when it does? Well, that's it for me. Thanks for sticking with me here. Visit my website, 10thingsihate.com. Shoot me an email. Read more about my book. Check out my blog there and see what I'm talking about throughout the course of the week. And until next time, I wish you all the best.